G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at the Mitsubishi F1. This plane has been pretty highly requested over the last couple of months since it was introduced into the game. I think it was over the patch before. I think it was, I think it was new power that this thing was introduced, but I could be wrong because honestly, I have not really been paying attention. There have not been many F1s in uh, my matches, and to me, it's kind of surprising. At the same time, it doesn't really surprise me in certain ways because the F4 EJ is basically better at every single thing. However, that doesn't stop the F1 from being non-competitive, it just makes it a little bit more niche and a little bit more different. Think of it as a, a different flavour of high tier gameplay, with the F4 EJ being that sort of very fast, very high performing, very high altitude, uh, lots of weapon systems but no manoeuvrability and the gun Whilst it is an M61 Vulcan, you can't quite keep on target as much as you can with the F1. I would think of the F1 as uh, maybe the Spitfire of top tier. It sort of climbs okay, climbs pretty well, uh, not anything particularly special, uh, is decently speedy, has some decent turn, and has uh, fairly okay weapons. It's nothing particularly impressive, although the Spitfire is a very, very impressive plane. In fact, it is the best and most impressive plane in the world, and no one can tell me otherwise. Anyway, the Mitsubishi F1 is probably one of those planes that sort of just sits in the middle. It's not particularly amazing, but you know what? It's good enough, and it does the job, and it doesn't really have to be any better. It's 10.3, so it doesn't actually exclusively see 10.7 combat, which is actually kind of nice. You'll see a match in the uh, in the background where I do come across a uh, I think it's a 9.3 game, and my god, isn't that some wild wild ass fun? The uh, Mitsubishi F1, like I said earlier, is basically a cut down version of the T2, or is like a a fighter version of the T2. Even though this thing is like a, a strike aircraft, it gets double the missiles, and so these missiles, whilst being uh, double in in number and being a bit stronger, does increase that battle rating up to 10.3. Is it worth it? Well, that all depends on how you see the AIM-9Ps. I honestly thought the AIM-9Ps would be the AIM-9P3 and they would have identical performance to the RB24Js, uh, but these things seem a little bit worse than the RB24Js in all honesty. Um, they're not quite as good at tracking, but they're certainly not bad. By any stretch of the imagination, these missiles are still quite good. You just have to be a little bit more frugal in the way that you use them. You can't just sort of expect them to get kills every single time. The RV24Js and the M9Ps, uh, you know, the M9P3, is basically, you know, it's supposed to be an M9J. But uh, I don't know what variant of the M9P this is. It feels okay. It's certainly not anything obviously overpowered. Uh, and honestly, I think it fits that sort of 10.3 battle rating quite well because the missiles are very strong, but you can still dodge them in most planes. You can see Harrier GR1s do not stand a chance, and uh, because, you know what, I thought I was low on fuel, I'll just take that head on, and of course, M61 Vulcan Cannon is a very, very strong cannon. This plane is perfect for its battle rating. I have not found a 10.3 that I've almost fallen in love with, and whilst I haven't been getting plenty of high kill games in this thing, I have been getting a lot of uh, good games, and consistently so which is really the main thing that I'd like to drive home about this plane. It doesn't sweep the floor every single time it gets matched with its opponents. However, you have that opportunity to just be consistent and just to be good. And for me, that is more important than having a very strong jet. Having something that is both consistent in up tiers, in down tiers, uh, and is also a little bit on the fun side, it has that dogfighting capability, it has that sort of interceptor capability if you will that sort of climb up to high altitude use your radar find someone and uh, shoot them down but of course it isn't that like brutally overpowered or brutally powerful beast that you might think the f4e or the mig-21 bis might be so in this gameplay here i'm going to kind of show you exactly what i mean uh, i am going to kick the bucket at one point in this match but not until i take a few with me and of course that's kind of due to I kind of want to say my team sort of falling apart and then leaving me with multiple engagements. Um, but of course, you know, that's to be expected. If your team falls apart, well, maybe, maybe there's something you could have done, but sometimes your team just sort of 
there's nothing you can do. And I think that might be this, the case with this particular situation. So I managed to take out a MiG-21 PFM. Poor, poor MiG-21 PFM. That thing is indeed a struggle bus. So next target here is the FG-1. I miss all of my brute, which is very, very sad indeed. And then I decide I'm gonna go for the MiG-21 here. And it's a MiG-21 BIS, so I gotta be careful. MiG-21 BIS is basically better for performing in most ways. Uh, you will sort of get outturned, you will get out accelerated, out climbed, and of course they have better missiles and flares. But if you have someone that is distracted, like this MiG-21 here, you can pretty much go for a fairly straightforward, fairly easy kill. And within a range of about one and a half kilometers, flares don't really do much for the AIM-9P, um, just like they don't do much for the uh, AIM-9J as well. So with that second kill out of the way there, MiG-21 is uh, going to be our next victim here. I launch a missile and have a look at that beautiful kill there. It's not very often that I get kills like that in the uh, in the F1 with the M9Ps. Uh, they normally don't like those higher speeds for some odd reason. I don't quite know why, but uh, I'll tell you what, when they do hit, they hit like a truck and it feels absolutely great. Next up, we have a Focke Wolf 190. For some odd reason, someone has decided to be an absolute gamer and bring a Focke Wolf 190 into the match. I didn't realize he was going head on, and I decided to take a quick little burst. Not before having a look at that Jaguar, noticing it's a Jaguar A and then panicking, because the Jaguar A has Matra missiles. So the moment you come across a Matra missile, uh, very, very spooky indeed. So I'm going to warm up. Well, I, I should have at least warmed up a uh, missile ready to go, but unfortunately for me, the Jaguar plays it very well. Baits me for an FGR2, and uh, I think there's a missile coming in right for my booty any second now to uh, sort of clean me up. There's not a whole lot you can do in a situation where you have multiple engagements. The Jaguar fires a Matra but misses, but the Phantom FGR2 from before comes around with an AIM-9D and takes me out. Beautiful play by those guys. And you can see that this thing is not really meant for constant dogfighting. It's not meant for constant dogfighting, especially around multiple enemies. Uh, and you have to really be aware of your surroundings in this thing. You do get a radar, you do get an RWR for that sort of stuff. But honestly, you still need to keep a, an, an eye open for some enemies. Speaking of enemies, we have a Shenyang F5 that gets absolutely obliterated by an AIM-9P. Very, very easy kill there. And our next victim here is a Yak-38. Going for another one, and that is another beautiful kill. Now, on to the next target, we have a MiG-21 PFM, but unfortunately I'm compressing a little bit, which I didn't really expect. Well, I haven't played the T2 in a very long time. I didn't really remember that the chassis does like to do that, and of course, I don't get the kill. Now, the F5 launches itself a uh, PL2, and unfortunately, PL cannot into space, so the missile just does not track after a little while and gets sort of uh, burnt out and just like poof explodes in a little a little poof like a little firework it's beautiful there we go there goes two of them and of course that leaves me with a swarm of enemies behind me uh, and i see a mig-21 there sort of having a look at uh launching a missile i'm going to keep going keeping my distance and you can see i've managed to make a lot of distance from the mig-21 which means that the range of the missile is uh is quickly dwindling or it's at least it's effective range relative to the uh, MiG-21 and there it goes right there never to be seen again this is basically a full down tier from what I can tell uh, and is honestly a bit of a, a wash sorry a bit of a cleanup whilst the Yak-38s do have R60s and it is very very possible for them to, to wipe the floor with things like the R60s uh, the F5 I don't think they really stand a chance. The MiG-21s are quite good, uh, but they do need to be on the offensive. And of course, if you do launch a missile in an early MiG-21, you only have the R3s. So you're not really gonna make much bread from them. You sort of need to win them in the, in the dogfights and try and get them into those 1v1s. Now, the last match here that I'm gonna show you, I, th I think this is gonna be the last match, is the match that sort of shows that this thing is not foolproof. In my opinion, the F1 is one of those planes that sits in the middle of the matchmaker, and whilst that isn't necessarily a bad thing because it is still quite competitive, it has good missiles, you can't expect to get heaps of kills all the time. However, you can make the most of your plane and your missiles 
we can spot here a MiG-21 MF and this is just the spotting system being the spotting system. I didn't spot him on the radar originally, I think I was just out of uh, the angle of the radar and I'm just gonna put the nose down a little bit, get a little bit more speed and then I realize he's not quite going for me. So I'm gonna turn around, go onto the offensive, prep a uh, missile and then I might prep the radar as well, just so that I can get that radar slaving working. I think the radar slaving is a little bit short in terms of its uh, distance here. And you can see how different the uh, AIM-9P is in terms of its tracking rate, in terms of the uh, ability for it to make turns, uh, compared to the AIM-9J. Now, in this case here, where I have a little bit less speed and the enemy is traveling kind of in front of me, I do manage to get that kill, but just remember that you can't be too ambitious with these missiles. It's not a bad thing, it does kind of balance the plane out as a 10.3, and of course I completely forgot to note that this plane does not have flares. So flares is another thing that makes a, a 10.7 really competitive, and unfortunately this thing does not have flares. Um, so like I said, rightfully a 10.3, and it's just one of those planes that kind of works for 10.3. I don't quite know how, it's some sort of Gaijin miracle, and maybe a Christmas miracle if you will, um, although Christmas is well and truly over, but no time for that. Next candidate here is a MiG-21 BIS, and have a look at the tracking once again on the MiG-21 BIS. It doesn't quite reach it. Normally an AIM-9J would have reached that, would have taken that. Now I don't fire a second missile at the BIS here because there we go, he's popping flares, and I thought, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna go for this Hunter. I completely butcher the shot, and one of the other things as a little quirk to this plane is that the plane seems to rotate around the spine. If you see that little spine there that just runs from behind the cockpit all the way to the tail, it seems to, when you when you roll, rotate from that point. That might be due to the high wing on the plane. Um, I don't quite know. Someone who is a bit more of a, an aviation or an aeronautical engineering expert, let me know on that one. But it doesn't really rotate from the center of the fuselage, which might throw you off sometimes when it comes to your rolling or your defensive flying or your aiming, which is what happened there with the Hunter. Now, with this case here, I'm not going to be launching a missile until I close a little bit more distance, uh, and I do hear a friendly there launching himself a missile, and this is probably going to get the MiG-21 to put himself into a turn. We are closing the distance quite rapidly, and for me, when I'm at about 2.5 kilometers, that's when I would ideally launch a uh, missile. But have a look at how this one tracks here. Beautiful, beautiful missile kill onto that uh, MiG-21 PFM. Again, the PFM is a bit of a suffer bus. Uh, I, I feel very bad for killing PFMs, but you know what? It's the F1. I, I need kills, all right? I need kills for a video, and you can't stop me. But honestly, this plane is just nice. It just sort of sits there in the middle of the road, not too, not too powerful, not too shitty. Very, very well balanced and for me, quite enjoyable and quite fun. Decently challenging, something that you didn't really sort of expect a whole lot from, but I'll tell you what, when you do get the hang of this plane, it is a lot of fun. Don't ask me how that happens. I just get the luck. I don't know how, but you know what? I'm not gonna complain because the uh, F1 is actually a lot of fun. For those of you who are actually, you know, wondering if it would be a good idea to grind this plane, I would say 100% hell yes, do it. The M9Ps are not your magic weapons like I've said a million times, but I'll tell you what, it's good enough, and it's good enough fun, you will enjoy every single second of playing the F1 as soon as you get those M9Ps, especially due to that avionics. That is an absolute beauty to come to the game, and the uh, radar and the lead indicator, all great fun. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for the recent support. I really appreciate it. We're doing like almost 100,000 views a day. This is absolutely fucking batshit, but thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.